by Xerox Antifreeze and Coolant. The antifreeze that beats winter. It's a cloudy, muggy race morning here at the Fairgrounds Raceway, Richmond, Virginia. You're looking at a brand new 10,000 seat facility that they have built in turns three and four in anticipation of expanding this racing facility from one half mile to nearly one full mile in length. Hello everyone, I'm Eli Gold. Welcome to Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway. It's easy to see why Harold Kinder likes to flag these races. We're standing up on the flag stand, the track just below us by some 15 feet. One of the best views anybody could have of a race here at Richmond. And hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate for us to get the full 400 laps in today. They're calling for a 60% chance of rain at roughly 3.30 this afternoon or two and a half hours into the event. So they'll be racing each other here at Richmond, the drivers will, and of course Mother Nature. Joining us on the broadcast today, as per usual, Dr. Jerry Punch. And this is a race that has a lot of stories built in. Number one, the lack of Tim Richmond on hand. The defending race champion is not here. Well, Tim's had a tough year, and it's no secret as to his problems throughout the year. He certainly has been ill. He missed the first 11 events of the season. Eli came back and won back-to-back -back at Pocono and Riverside. But a couple of weeks ago, his illness got worse, and he had to pull out and what looks to be the rest of the year. So I think we've seen our last of Tim Richmond for 87, but a lot of guys here who aren't glad to see him gone. He's a tough competitor, and some guys up front who'd like to pick up their first wins of the season. Of course, you talk about a fellow who's looking for a victory. How about Richard Petty? Not to be greedy, but he's already got 13 wins at this racetrack over the years. Richard's last win here, though, came back in 1975 driving a Dodge, back when they ran Dodges, of course. But he would like to win. He runs awfully well here, and their team has been very close. They had a second at Bristol earlier in the year. He likes the short track. It's a short race here, fairly, for a short track season for Richard, and he might just pick up his first win in a long time here today. The third member of our broadcast crew this afternoon is Pat Patterson. He'll be on pit road throughout the day, and he's there right now with the king of stock car racing, Richard Petty. Gentlemen? Richard, I guess... 201 is every race you come out that you haven't won 201. What's, what's different about today? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, we don't really know yet. Uh, you know, we're not starting in too good a position, but uh, 400 laps is a long way. So if we can get the right breaks, then we can be in good shape. So, uh, you know, you don't, you don't never know. You come and you, you anticipate winning every race you go to. You know you can't, but, uh, you know, if you went and said, okay, I'm going to try to run fourth or fifth, then uh, no need of going. Any advantage of being a 15-time champion here and winning this race that many times? None whatsoever. Uh, every race here is a brand new race, probably more so here than any other racetrack because it's so hard to get a car set up for here and the track changes so much during the race. So you just come and take pot luck and if you happen to hit it, you're in good shape. Now the king of stock car racing is on pit road and ready to go here at Richmond. Well, you've got to like Richard Petty's chances. You've got to like the pole sitter, Alan Kowicki, who we'll meet shortly. And Ricky Rudd was awfully quick in the limited practice we had yesterday before the rain. Well, Ricky, this is his home track, Eli. And, of course, yesterday was his birthday. He turned 31. What an old guy. <laughs> uh, you know, he's been running so well here. And, and Bud Moore's team, the Motocraft team, they brought a brand-new race car here to Richmond, a brand-new Ford Thunderbird. They like their chances. But I think Cole Wicke has got to be the odds-on favorite just from a sentimental point of view. His career started here two years ago. Sort of ominously, he backed a car in the wall in turn three and qualifying. And it's the same race car he backed in the wall that he put on the pole today. Same car, of course, that also won the pole here in February. And as soon as we come back to Fairgrounds Raceway, ETN's coverage of the Wrangler 400, Eli Gold with Jerry Punch and Pat Patterson. Before the break, we were talking about Alan Kowicki on the pole for both races here in Richmond. You know, Alan's uh, a little bit unusual. He didn't get into Winston Cup racing by following the typical Southern short track uh, background. He is an engineering graduate, University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, a very smart fella, runs his own team, a shoestring budget, so to speak. Uh, uh, he likes racing. He goes about it very methodically and very mechanically as an engineer. Uh, that's why he's done so well so quickly. He came close this year at Pocono to winning. Uh, as folks saw here on SETN, that he nearly was able to hold off Earnhardt on the final lap, couldn't do it. He led 65 laps here back in the spring. He'd like to lead maybe 400 today. I don't think he'll lead that many, but he might lead the important ones, which will be the last four or five. Pat Patterson is with the driver of the Xerox Ford Thunderbird. The man who's on the pole here at Richmond this afternoon, Alan Kowicki, Milwaukee's favorite son. Alan, you ready to do it again here at Richmond? You had the pole earlier this year, and again, you've repeated that feat. What do you look for here in the opening sessions of this race? It's hard to really predict what the track's going to be like because it rained yesterday and we didn't get our final practice session in, so it's really a bit of a guess as to how to set the car up. Uh, we'll know in a little while if we got the right setup or not. 
Alan Kowicki getting ready to do battle, gentlemen. Let's go back upstairs to Dr. Punch. Well, thank you, Pat Patterson, there with the pole setter, Alan Kowicki. You know, Eli, Kowicki will be strong, but the guy starting beside him has won a lot of times here at Richmond, but he has yet to win this year, and that's the veteran, Darrell Walter. So there are a lot of stories within the overall story of the Wrangler 400. Glad you're with us on SETN. Let's take a look at the complete starting lineup, including a first-time campaigner on the Winston Cup Tour. There is Alan Kowicki, from whom we've just heard, on the pole at 94.052 miles an hour. Second pole for him here at Richmond this season. And here's 40-year-old Darrell Waltrip, three-time Winston Cup champion. He will start outside row one. He needs a win awfully bad in the Tide Chevrolet. The Iceman, Terry Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas. He's in Junior Johnson's Budweiser Chevrolet, qualifying third best at 93.826. Hurry and Harry Gann, what a dismal season they've had in the Skull Bandit Chevrolet. He will start outside row two in fourth spot. A winner here a year ago in February. Kyle Petty drives for the Wood Brothers and their Ford Thunderbird. 93.650 miles an hour for Kyle Petty. Brand new Motocraft Ford for this driver, Ricky Rudd. He turned 31 yesterday. He won here back in 1984. And a driver who's really come a long way in a short period of time. Michael Waltrip drives the All-Pro Auto Parts Chevrolet for Bahari Racing. And reigning Winston Cup champion and current point leader, Dale Earnhardt. He takes that potent Wrangler Chevrolet back from post position number eight, outside row four. And Rusty Wallace in the Kodiak Pontiac, prepared by Barry Dotson and the crew. He starts ninth at 93.163. Rounding out the top ten, Jeffrey Bodine. He will start tenth, 93.149 miles per hour. The qualifying effort for the Levi Garrett Exxon Chevrolet. So that's the top ten as the field gets set to roll off the line here at Fairgrounds Raceway in the sixth row. Morgan Shepard and Benny Parsons, a couple of veterans there. Huey Town's Neil Bonnet starts alongside second-generation driver Sterling Marlin. Eli Row 8, Bobby Allison, a multi-time winner here. Bill Elliott in a sort of a new short track car for him here. Row 9, Richard Petty, a 13-time winner, and rookie Dale Jarrett. Ken Schrader and Ernie Irvin, an interesting story out of North Carolina. We'll tell you more of him later on. Dave Marcus and Phil Parsons. Dave has won here twice. Row 12, Bobby Hillen Jr., Steve Crispin, a rookie driver from Indiana. Row 13, Jimmy Smut Means, a good short track campaigner, and D.K. Ulrich, the independent. Buddy Arrington and Bush Grand National driver Larry Pollard in row 14. Pollard drives this week for Roger Hamby. Trevor Boys and Doug French. French is that first-time starter we told you about earlier. He's from Wall Township, New Jersey. So that's how it shapes up. The Winston Cup cars now making a few laps here at Fairgrounds Raceway. This one, Jerry, has the potential the potential of being a slam-bang type of race. I think everybody who's waving to us now would be somewhat disappointed if you don't see that. I think fenders got their, their names here. Bumpers got their names here. Bumpers are for bumping. Fenders for fending off. And that's what we'll see today. Car here at Fairgrounds Raceway, Richmond, Virginia. Eli Gold with Jerry Punch, Pat Patterson, set to bring you SETM's coverage of the Wrangler Indigo 400. Probably the nicest these cars will look all afternoon long. I guarantee you, 400 laps at this half-mile track will take its toll. Pace car moves any line. We're set for green. Alan Kowicki on the pole gets a quick jump. Harold Kinder, we get the view from his flag stand, sends them on their way, and the field now shuffles off towards turn one. Coming through turns one and two, Alan Kowicki in car number seven, the bright orange Darrell Waltrip tied machine to his outside. Third is Terry Labonte. Kyle Petty is in the fourth spot. Right now, Darrell's going to have to work to try and get back in line. You get caught on the high side of Richmond, it could cost you a lot of time. Now Darrell slides back in and looks for the inside move beneath Kowicki, whose car slides high coming out of turn two. Opens up the inside for Darrell Waltrip. You saw the sunshine just beating off those cars. Mother Nature now looks as though she is going to cooperate after that cloud cover of earlier. Now Kowicki goes wide and opens the inside for Waltrip in number 17. Darrell Waltrip, a six-time winner here at Richmond. Four of his wins have come in this Wrangler event. He takes the lead now, and looks like Terry Labonte will sneak a peek inside Kowicki as they exit two. If he can't keep the car on the low side of the racetrack, it'll be a major problem here at Richmond, as it is at most every short track. Now Labonte, oh, he gets into the Kowicki car. Kyle Petty is right there watching, all the while Waltrip peels away. 
field, mostly single file. They splash Mesa Flagstaff. There's the leader, Darrell Waltrip, and Kowicki now backsliding through the field. Harry Gannon and Ricky Rudd move beneath Kowicki, cranking him back in the top five. And there's Earnhardt, who started back in eighth spot. Dale has been particularly strong in the five short track races this year. Car number three has won all five of them. He has 10 wins already in 21 races on the Winston Cup Tour. You heard Alan Kowicki tell Pat Patterson early on they did not get a chance to run that final practice session, the all-important session, and set the car up here. So his car is really pushing coming out of the corners. He's losing a lot of time. Kyle Petty and Terry Labonte. Kyle in car number 21. Labonte in the 11. They are running second and third. Rudd is fourth. Earnhardt is now fifth. Boy, Darrell Walter beginning to pull away a little bit as they battle back in the pack. Labonte needs to win. Sixth is Harry Gant. Kowicki is back in line now in seventh. Back through turns three and four. See, it doesn't look it necessarily here on the cameras, on the screen, but they generate some pretty good speed on the straightaways here. They're running probably over 110 miles per hour at the midpoint of the straightaways. They hustle down the back stretch and get on the brakes, and the cars will really tend to slide going into turn three and into turn one. That's second, third, and fourth you're looking at right there behind the race leader. Right there, car number 17, Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip really pulling away, and it looks that possibly Labonte is having his hands full back there with Kyle Petty. Kyle is not going to cut him any slack here, and as long as he's got Labonte, as you see, forced to the outside, Kyle feels he's very much in the hunt to try and grab second spot. Kyle is inside of Labonte. They touch. Can Labonte save it? The car goes around on him. They have caution on the speedway. Gant hit by Kowicki. Kowicki hits Labonte. Nowhere to go. Here comes the field stacking up a good 12, 14, 15 cars. You count them. Your basic high-priced parking lot here coming off turn four at Fairgrounds Raceway. All started by Labonte and Kyle Petty as Kyle tried to make the inside move and look at the carnage. Oh, there is Sirloin, the car that uh, Alan Kowicki backed into the wall a couple of years ago and ran so long, and boy, Sirloin is maybe through for the day. Look at Gant backwards trying to back the Skull Bandit Chevrolet up to try to prevent any more damage. There's Kowicki's car. Ricky Rudd has slowed down. Earnhardt has slowed down. There's Jack Massey, the NASCAR official with the go sign. And then Kowicki's not going anywhere with that car looking like that. Now again, you've got to remember that when they average 90-some-odd miles an hour for the lap, as Jerry and I were just talking, they come down the straightaways into the corner in excess of 100 miles an hour. When the track narrows up on you, there's absolutely nowhere to go. Let's watch it again. Kyle Petty was wanting to get past number 11, Labonte, for second spot. Here, Kyle sneaks a pick to the inside. The right front of Kyle's car and the left rear of Labonte's car touch right there. Labonte's car slips sideways. This track is off. Slick. I thought he might be able to save it there. He has the wheels turned hard to the right. He's trying to save it. And Kyle is trying to get him room on the grass down on the inside of the pavement, I should say, down in turn four. Labonte almost has it, and the car gets sideways and skitters on around and tags the rail. There's the Ricky Rudd car moving by, as well as Kyle Petty. Now we'll see how long we can carry this uh, in the truck if we keep this replay going for a while. Alan Kowicki is the guy who really ends up as one of the uh, little silver balls inside the pinball machine. He got, uh, he tagged somebody in the front end and got tagged himself. I think he ends up, here comes Kowicki, number seven. He's already been hit by Gant and Michael Waltrip, and he does get Labonte. And Mike Waltrip gets tagged almost deadpan from behind by Morgan Shepard. Ouch, as Waltrip is shoved in the Kowicki, he gets hit from both ends, and everyone just sort of gaggles up behind him as the cluster of cars heavily damaged at turn four. And there's, look at poor Bill Elliott coming in there to the left of your screen and 18, Dale Jarrett. Where do you go? There is nowhere to go in a situation where the track is totally blocked. There are four abreast there at the front end. That's where you jump on the brake pedal and close your eyes, you like. And there's what's left of the Budweiser Chevrolet yeah. as uh, Pete Wright, the crew go to work on that car. The front, the rear of the car has been shoved down. Let's take another look at that from Harold Kinder's standpoint up near the flag stand. Here's Waltrip already leading the pack, and there you see Petty and Lavati getting together again. And Terry, you see him having the right front tires turn to the right side. The wheel is cranked hard right. He's trying to keep the car out of the guardrail, trying to keep the car from spinning, but now it's a lost cause. Here's Kowicki coming out of turn four. That's Mike Waltrip right behind him. Kowicki follows Harry Gant. Now, Gant feels like he may get through it, but here comes Labonte back across the racetrack. Kowicki tags Gant. Gant is hard on the brakes. 
Rusty Wallace moves to the outside. There's Mike Waltrip, Morgan Shepard, Neil Bonnet, Jeff Bodine, and everyone else trying to get those cars woed down to keep them piling into that mess in turn four. Well, they, as well as Labonte, had run. Of course, aerodynamics are not quite as critical on a racetrack such as this as they would be at Daytona or Talladega. But that 11 Budweiser Chevrolet has uh, got some pretty decent bruises on it here so far. They're going to be continuing work on pit road. Alan Kowicki has already climbed from his car. Pat Patterson is there. Alan, what, what exactly happened out there? Well, somebody got in Labonte and spun him coming off the fourth turn, and, you know, I saw something happen, and I was slowing down, and I, Mike Walter run in the back of me and pushed me right into it. I had nowhere to go. Can you possibly get this thing back in the race? Maybe, but it's not going to be the same. Okay, Alan Quick. So the special K, Alan Kowicki, looks at the Xerox Sport Thunderbird. We'll get this all sorted out for you as we continue from Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway. We are just 10 laps. We told you we would sort it out for you. That's how the leaderboard looks at this moment. Parsons, Marcus, Hillen, the top three. Then Bonnet and Earnhardt. Schrader is sixth. Elliott seventh. Rusty Wallace is going eighth. Darrell Waltrip lines up ninth and tenth as Ricky Wright. Bill Parsons all the way up from 22nd starting spot as we go back to green in the Fast Bears Gold Classic Oldsmobile. And Phil wastes no time in putting some distance between himself and the field. They head for turn one. Trying to pick their way back up through race traffic now. Dave Marcus and Bobby Hillen Jr. Go to Dale Earnhardt. Bill Parsons got off to a good quick jump. This same car he's driving, Eli, had his best finish of his young career early in this year at Martinsville, Virginia. He finished fourth. He has one top five finish and five top tens thus far this year. He currently is 12th in the Winston Cup point standards with earnings over $120,000. A good year, his best ever thus far for Phil Parsons. Dave Marcus having dropped back a couple of spots. There's Neil Bonnet now. Actually, I should have said that Dave Marcus dropped back a few more feet because there he is, car 71, just ahead of the 62 and 75. And now Earnhardt makes a bid on Neil Bonnet. This will be a battle for third spot. Earnhardt makes a move inside of Neil going through the corner. Bobby Allen Jr. trying to follow through with a bit of a love tap. And oh, a sandwich. And more, more than a love tap that time. Schrader, Hillen, and Bonnet, and Hillen was a meat in that sandwich, and he got tagged from both sides, and now he's back into Neil Bonnet as Bonnet's car Gets sideways, and Neil gathers it back in. But possible problems for Bobby Hill as those cars came together. It gets rough on the short track, he like. Nobody cutting anybody any slack here. Neil Bonner able to continue around. And now I understand Jerry just monitoring the NASCAR radio that there is an ambulance in the infield that is going to have to transport someone to the local hospital. There is no tunnel here so they're going to have to put out the caution the caution comes out you see the ambulance moving through the infield now that's keith wilson one of buddy erickson's crew members but the leaders will make their way down pit road and look at walter making a move and they are door to door they are racing in the pits <laughs> eli that is something that's card is obviously frown on you cannot race on pit road at all and we'll have to wait and see what the officials do but it's earnhardt then walter Kyle Petty's car goes front three for service. In comes Terry Labonte, the 11 Bud Machine. Look at the race we're having now for tire changes. Earnhardt's crew, Kirk Shelberty, Will Lynn, David Smith and the crew against the crew of Darrell Waltrip, Eddie Jones, Jeff Hammond, Eddie Dickerson, and Earnhardt's crew, good pit stop, even under yellow, he is back on the speedway. Now, again, listening to the NASCAR radio, they say that both Earnhardt and Waltrip are going to be held at the start-finish line I will have to start at the tail end of the pack. They're not going to put them a lap down, but are instead going to hold them and put them back at the rear of the field, although on the lead lap because of that racing incident. There you see uh, Jeff Hammond right now just being told and I guess discussing right back with the NASCAR officials that decision that was made. They're just saying, if you hear them say they're going to bring him back in, Further up pit road, Pat Patterson is there. Doyle Ford and Richard Childress, Earnhardt's car owner, are talking. Pat? Well, as you can see, the conversation goes on between Richard Childress and the NASCAR official. Apparently, some problems with the way Darrell Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt came down the front stretch, and now they've sent them back to the end of the line. 
The conversation still, though, continues between the two crew chiefs, not only Richard Childers, but Jeff Hammond over in the Darrell Walker pit. The situation now being explained, but as we get ready to go back to green, what it does boil down to is Earnhardt and Walter now have a lot of ground to make up. That's awfully tough to do in the short track, but those two have been, have been the hot cars here today at Richmond, and meanwhile, the lead cars are Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd back up front. There's Kenny Schrader, Neil Bonnet, Richard Petty in that three-car pack. There there, there's Earnhardt and Walter. Right. Right. They're trying to wind their way back through the field. They're trying to move on the rear deck of Dave Marcus. Kenny Schrader is in the wall, bounces off with a piece of Neil Bonnet there. Schrader rim rides all around this turn. One and two area. Benny Parsons now spins. Benny Parsons spins. That will bring out caution. The caution had not flown when Schrader bounced off the wall and collected a piece of the old bonnet. Now there is going to be caution on the speedway. Uh, let's see Schrader quickly heading around towards the pit area. There's Benny Parsons. Pat Patterson already making his way towards the Schrader pit area. And here comes Kenny now. What's the story, Pat? Yes, Schrader sits on pit road right now in the Red Baron Pizza car after having a good run. The crew trying to figure out exactly what is the problem on that car. Obviously, the engine off. They're going to have to get it behind the wall over here to get any kind of work done on it. This is a tough break. Schrader has had his car hooked up today and running before that incident down in turn one. Gentlemen? They have bent some of the steering mechanism pad in the right front of that car. They can't even get the wheel turned to make the entrance onto pit road or behind the wall. Back to green flag racing. Darrell Waltrip, 17, inside of Bill Elliott, car number nine. You don't know exactly where to watch here now. There are so many battles going on. Darrell working well on the low side of the racetrack. Kyle Petty in the Sitco 711 Ford right behind him. And Ernie and Dan Elliott and the crew have gotten this car dialed there. It's one of the front steer cars out of their Coors Melling Racing Stable. You know, Bill has never won on a short track. His best finishes have come here at Richmond earlier in the year. He finished fourth and duplicated that later on in the year at Bristol, Tennessee. On the back straightaway, Bo Dime. Ricky Rudd in the 15. Dale Earnhardt in the three. Bo Dime. And he goes around. Ricky Rudd. And Bodine seem to get together there just a bit. Rudd pulls away with the rest of the field. Bodine makes the loop. And he has to wait as traffic comes by. Phil Parsons, Dave Marcus, Alan Kulwicki's remnants. Well, nobody ever said it would be easy. We are under caution yet again. Don't you go away. We are still early in the Wrangler Indigo 400. I'm Eli Gold with Jerry Punch, Pat Patterson, and the whole SETN crew. Raceway in Richmond, Virginia. There are Darrell Waltrip in 17, Dale Earnhardt in car number three, continuing to battle for the lead. And you know, Jerry Punch, by now I probably would have uh, wagered a couple of house payments that uh, those two guys would maybe not have been giving each other quite as much room as they really have turned out to. No problems for Michael Waltrip. He's, what is that? Looks like oil on the oh, racetrack. Trouble in turn one, and Phil Parsons has tagged the wall. There's Cole Wickey's car. And another car, Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin is in the wall. A number of cars come slashing by. Looks like possibly Dave Marcus has got some yeah. comfort, some sheet metal damage on the right side. There's Waltrip coming through. It looked like there was something coming out of Michael Waltrip's car. As Kowicki climbs out of what's left of Sirloin, which is now probably ground beef, the car he had named the Z-Rex Antifreeze Ford. There's Bill Elliott coming through. We just got a glimpse of the Mike Waltrip car looks to be leaking some fluid, and we just speculated maybe it was oil, possibly water overflow. We can get a comment in just a moment to find out what that was. And we are going to red flag this race, Eli. They're going to put it on the red. There is some damage to the guardrail in addition to those cars. Let's check in with Pat Patterson. He is on pit road awaiting some of the drivers. I see you've got Alan Kowicki. Go ahead, Pat. Alan Kowicki, the Z-Rex 4 Thunderbird. This has been a long afternoon for you after this final incident down here. Surprisingly, I think everybody watching was surprised to see you get the car back in the race before, but now this last one took you out. What happened down there? Well, apparently an oil line came off another car or something, but somebody dumped a bunch of oil, and Phil Parsons and I both cut into the oil, and there was nothing either one of us could do. We just went for a, a long slide hit the guardrail really hard, and I think we pretty much sold out a race car. Well, this was a car that you had here two years ago. It's a car you set on both poles in. I guess the question is, will it live to see another race at Richmond? 
I don't think so. Okay, that's the end of Sirloin, but Alec Wickie will be back. Gentlemen. A uh, tough break there. There you see the field coming to a halt. They do have some repair work to do on that guide rail, as you see, in turns one and two. But hey, what is today's the kind of day where it didn't even pay for Alan Kulwicki to get out of bed? Uh, it was just problems from the word go. What does everybody do now while they're fixing this guide rail? Well, drivers are taking a drink and crew members have found something to eat. Pat, what's, what's cooking? Well, as you can see, gentlemen, uh, as this red flag condition exists here in Richmond, Everybody's come on out to somewhat of a Sunday afternoon picnic. Everybody's come over to pick up a hamburger, hot dog. A lot of the crew members just getting a snack here. It's a good time to come take advantage of it. They're putting the drivers back in the car, and we're just about ready to get back to green here at Richmond. Uh, I'll take mine medium, Jerry. Yeah, I'll have one well, possibly. Well, okay. Well, back to green flag racing as they have gotten the repair work done. And now everybody again chasing Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip. Well, at least for the moment. But now Rusty Wallace is very much in the picture. Now these drivers trying to tiptoe, at least initially, for a few laps. A lot of speedy drives you see blowing around the racetrack. A year ago, we had an engine blow and some speedy drive put on the racetrack and went back to green. And, and one of these drivers, Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd, both involved in a crash. Wallace in turn one, Rudd in turn three, slipping in the speedy drive and eliminated them from possible victory contention. That will not happen today as we have been under red flag and worked the speedy dry in. Now we are back to full green flag racing. Rusty Wallace, the rear end of his car, kicks out just a bit. That opens the inside for Darrell Waltrip, who makes the pass. And now Darrell begins to close in on Dale Earnhardt. And Rusty Wallace, he's not letting Darrell get away, but he has to get off the corner as well. And Rusty has to really gingerly feather that car off the corner. His car awfully loose, and he is fighting a steering wheel. Meanwhile, Earnhardt pulling away, his car hooked up as if on a rail. He comes off the corners like a rifle shot using the bottom groove. Waltrip's car handling very well, but Rusty certainly has his hands full. That Dale actually is only, is almost creating a groove because right now that's basically a one groove racetrack and especially going into turns one and two, you see him throw the left side tires underneath the white line. He's basically using the apron of the racetrack to his advantage. Ricky Rudd makes his move inside of Rusty Wallace. That's a battle back for a third spot as Rudd moves beneath him. And now Neil Bonnet tries to get a shot, but Wallace comes back in the throttle. The car runs well in the straightaways, but he's having his trouble in the corner. Amazing how well these cars are running beaten and bruised as they are. Bill Elliott, he's very much in the hunt. There you see Ricky Rudd. Rusty Wallace going wide again. Kyle Petty is there to try and take advantage and again back for the lead. Darrell Waltrip is trying ever so hard to use that inside groove. How much of his tires does he use up in a deal like this? I think they have the car set up to run on the bottom of the racetrack. If they don't, he will certainly use that right front tire up in a hurry. But his car handling well on the bottom. He is sliding, keeping the car pinned to the inside of the track, not to run into Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt driving it from the outside groove to give Darrell plenty of room. Something we haven't seen in quite a while from these no. two guys. But I think it's a challenge. They want to do something no one else has done all day, and that's stay out of somebody else. Let's survive here. That's right. We are at Fairgrounds Raceway, Richmond, Virginia. Eli Gold, Jerry Punch, Pat Patterson, the entire SETN crew. That's third and fourth place. Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace. Brand new car for Rudd, the Motocraft 4. This is Samson, the old car that they have in the Raymond Beetle stable, the car Rusty won with at Bristol and Martinsville a year ago. Taking his way carefully through the corners, Rusty Wallace is. All the way out to that wall, really sliding it off the corner. Wagging the tail on that Pontiac, Kodiak Pontiac, and he still makes a move inside of Rudd. But there's a battle back up front as they move around the Buddy Arrington car. That is Earnhardt, the leader. Darrell Walter running second, his best run, no doubt, of the year. They have had their troubles throughout the year. Walter hanging tough a half a car length back from Earnhardt. Dale is really using traffic well. They're coming up on Larry Pollard, driving for Roger Hamby in car number 12. They are again third and fourth place. And you can just see Wallace's car not taking the set. There's the battle for the lead again. And again, this time, Larry Pollard is the factor. You nailed it, Eli. He used traffic perfectly. There was Waltrip already to the inside, but he gave way because of the slower car. Of course, that's the advantage you have when you are in the lead. Uh, you can pick and choose where to go, how best to keep the other man at bay. 
But Dale is not concerned, as you see, about giving up the inside groove. He knows he can keep that Chevy of his wound up off the outside and keep Darrell back that way. Got to be impressed with the strength of that Lou La Rosa engine in the Wrangler Chevrolet. Of course, you know, Jeff Hamlin and Eddie Jones, Eddie Dickerson and the crew have Darrell's car dialed in for the bottom of the racetrack. And he, just, he has the advantage on the inside of the corner, but he can't stay with him when it comes to muscle and horsepower off the curb. Rusty Wallace, Rusty Wallace in the wall in turn number one. The hood flies up on the Kodiak Pontiac. He was battling Ricky Rudd for third. And now he's trying to figure out a way to see. You can kind of see Rusty jockeying around there in the driver compartment. How can he see? The hood is back up right in his face, and apparently the middle of the hood has crushed the windshield. The right front of the car heavily damaged. The wheel and tire assembly just flopping there as he tries to make his way back to pit road. Oh, it's a tough break. Rusty Wallace, don't know if something broke or if the car was just driven too deeply into the corner, whatever. He ended up in the wall. We are not going to show caution here. Because, as you saw, Rusty was able to make it back around. And it would be awful to have to break up this battle right now anyway. Well, laps winding down, and the weather is not a problem. We thought it might be earlier today as it was threatening skies. But the sun is out, and they are battling at Richmond. And it looks like Waltrip now. Well, nope, again, the rocket ship comes <laughs> into play. He puts the afterburners on, and Earnhardt pulls him a half a car away. Don't you dare leave us now, because there's more racing coming up from Richmond. Will these two gentlemen decide it, or possibly Ricky Rudd? Don't leave us now, as SETN's coverage of the Wrangler Indigo 4. <laughs> Dell Elliott is one of the cars remaining on the lead lap. There you see the leaderboard as we have it right now. Those are the only cars on the lead lap at the moment. As the laps wind their way down here at Fairgrounds Raceway in Richmond, Virginia. Bill Elliott trying to uh, get his best, uh, one of his better finishes uh, of the year. Of course, you know, he'd like to win his first short track race, but it probably isn't going to happen today because of these two fellas who are running awfully well. Of course, Dale Earnhardt, who's won five for five on the short tracks, and Darrell Waltrip, the man who has been the short track superstar for so many years, winning the championships based on his short track performances, had a tough year on the short tracks. In fact, in five previous short track starts, Eli, his best finish at 12th at Bristol. Listen to this, he's finished 20th at Richmond early in the year, 21st at Wilkesboro, 21st at Martinsville, and 21st just recently at Bristol. So he has not had a good year on the short track. One of the big questions here now is who's using up their tires more quickly than the next. Earnhardt trying to hold off Waltrip or Darrell trying to make the moves inside of Earnhardt. Pat Patterson is with one of Darrell's crew members. Eddie, is, is Darrell using more tires than Dale is by trying to go inside each time? No, I don't think so because the car is working better on the hot tires. The hotter our tires are, the better the car is to work. But I don't think it really hurts itself. I think he's just trying to worry Dale right now. Second question is, do you think he's finding the car up any when that happens? I don't think so. He's been running low all day. Car wants to get there. Okay, Eddie Jones and Darrell Walters pit. That is Pat Patterson. I'm Eli Gold with Dr. Jerry Punch, SETN's coverage of the Wrangler Indigo 400. So we are in the last handful of laps or so here at Fairgrounds Raceway. Just 10 remaining. A couple of handfuls. Yeah, two handfuls. You know, it looks like uh, that Waltrip is trying to find that upper groove that Earnhardt has been running so effectively the past 20 or 30 laps. But his car, as Eddie Jones mentioned, seems to be better suited to run downstairs on the bottom of the racetrack in, in a low groove. Some of the anxious tight crew watching their driver, Darrell Waltrip, as he's trying to find his way around Dale Earnhardt. You know, the idea is normally you get on the driver's rear bumper and you worry him, and you worry him until he makes a mistake. Well, Dale Earnhardt isn't a guy that's easily worried and doesn't make many mistakes, he likes. Race traffic may be a factor here in the last eight or so laps remaining. There's Jeff Hammond, Darrell's crew chief. Again, Waltrip makes the bit inside of Dale Earnhardt. And now takes the edge, but again, Earnhardt, coming off the high side of the racetrack, comes battling right back. Not exactly the way the textbook says it should work, but you can throw the book out when these two are battling today. Walter has a half car length advantage, but then Earnhardt hits the afterburner. He just rams his foot into that Lula Rosa engine and pulls Walter by a car length and a half on the straightaway. Further back. 71, Dave Marcus, he is not on the lead lap. Nor, for the matter now, is Richard Petty. Those two cars have dropped back one lap in arrears along with Terry Labonte, who does four cars remain on the lead lap. Those two, 
plus Ricky Rudd in the 15 and Bill Elliott in car number nine. Raquel Wide, Earnhardt sweeps and turns one and two. The jumps back in the throttle and pulls Walter by two car lengths. But Daryl fighting back on the bottom of the racetrack. Now lap traffic will be a factor. One of those lap cars, which is not really a lap car, up in front of him. That, of course, is the Marcus car with five laps to go. A single handful held out by Harold Kinder, the flagman. And again, Waltrip tries to make the move, but lap traffic is Dave Marcus in front of Earnhardt. Dave Marcus is a lap down. Now threatened to be put two laps down, which he is. The other car directly in front of the leaders, Bill Elliott, who is on the lead lap still. Richard Petty directly ahead of him. What do you think, Doctor? Well, I think Earnhardt is going to have to make a mistake or get caught boxed in in traffic for Walter to have a shot. Dale's awfully strong, particularly off the corners. We can't emphasize that enough today. And there's the third place car, Ricky Rudd, the Motorcraft Ford. He is back some distance from the front two cars, some 15 or so car lengths back. And now the strategy begins. Waltrip must cool his tires. He is laid back a little bit, possibly. To cool those tires for the last challenge. Maybe with two laps to go, he'll make a run. Leader closing in on Bill Elliott, the fourth place runner. Just a couple laps remaining, as you see. And now Walter begins to move in on Dale Earnhardt. Two laps to go. We have trouble. A couple of cars Neil together. Bonnet. And Neil Bonnet spins, and we have a tag the wall in turn one. And the caution is going to come out on the speedway. As the leaders come past, this now is for the win, then. Earnhardt will hold off Waltrip. They get the white flag and the caution from Harold Kinder. You cannot pass under caution, so that now technically was for the win. Darrell Waltrip will not be able to legally pass. Earnhardt is going past him there, but that is not for position. And there's Neil Bonnet, who brought out that caution on lap number 399. And remember, now, if the yellow comes out after the white has been displayed, it's anybody's ball game. You can race back to that checker, but the yellow came out before the white. They must hold position, and checkered flag goes to Dale Earnhardt. The victory is the 11th of the year for Dale Earnhardt in 22 races. He is batting 500, regardless of the sport. That is an awfully impressive number. And six short track races this year, six victories. And there are the two crews involved in that great shootout congratulating one another for a fine show. There's the man who finished second, Darrell Waltrip. Kind of thought he might be able to pick up his first win of the year here today. Well, he's got to be impressed. They've got to have a smile on his face and the crew's face for the super run they had here at Richmond, Eli. But the survivor? In this crowd of some 30,000 making their way out after watching quite a show here today, Jerry. Well, Dale Earnhardt, certainly. I'm impressed by the kind of room that Earnhardt and Waltrip gave each other those last 50 or 60 laps. They could have run side by side and really exchanged cheap metal and could have ended up into the guardrail, but uh, they gave each other plenty of racing room. Pat Patterson is in victory lane with today's conquering hero. Dale Earnhardt, victorious here at Richmond. Dale, this will be the last time you wear the Wrangler colors and the last time Wrangler will be here at Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway. It's got to be a special moment for you. Well, it is being a Wrangler race and uh, our sponsor at... Uh, you know, they've been with us since 1980, and uh, I've been associated with them since 1980, and it's been a, been a great uh, main sponsor, but they are going to be our associate next year, and uh, we are going to keep the, the tie with Wrangler, and they're, they're a great company, and I'm, I'm proud to still have them. Uh, they cut back on their advertising budgets and changed their, their ad, adver, advertising uh, situation around, so, uh, you know, it's good that they can still stay involved with us, and uh, we can still go on and uh, the bigger and better things, too. 11 wins this season, Dale. That ties Bill Elliott in 1985 with a ch good chance for you to go over that record. What does that mean to you? That means a lot, really. Uh, you know, we, we look at them points. As they'll, be, uh, they'll be there as, they, as we run races, and, uh, you know, we just take them one by one, and uh, luckily we uh, got us another one. Finally, Dale, you, were, you ran so well with, with, uh, with uh, Daryl Waltrip out there. Such a clean race between you two. I think everybody was looking for you guys to really beat and bang, and you, you held your ground. You both raced hard. Well, he raced me clean for a change. Uh, you know, he, he usually gets to rooting and pushing, and uh, he raced me clean. And uh, other than that incident on pit road where he got up beside me and we rubbed get, trying to get into pit, same pit stall, and, uh, you know, NASCAR black flag, both of us for that. You're not supposed to be side by side on pit road to start with. So I think it was his fault, but... Uh, you know, still a black flag, both of us. We had to make that up. Both of us luckily come back to one, two. Okay, win number 11 for Dale Earnhardt here at Richmond. Dale Earnhardt now within reach of the all-time modern-day career victory to total. As he wins, Walter finishes second, then Rudd, Elliott, and Petty in the top five. 
of the top five winners. Of course, Earnhardt uh, could Penny holds the all-time record of 13 victories set in 75. Bodine, Marcus, Labonte, Jimmy Means finishing ninth, and Neil Bonnet in 10th. We'll take a bit further back in the running order as time permits before we sign off. But right now, Pat Patterson has made his way over to the other man in that fine finish, Darrell Waltrip, driver of the Tide Chevrolet. We're with Darrell Waltrip, second place finish here. You really had a whole grandstand full of folks and a whole bunch out in TV land on their feet there, you and Earnhardt, those last few laps. Well, it was a, you know, a hard race, a good race, and uh, the track was so slick down low that I just never could get the bite I needed. I uh, felt like I'd wait till the last lap, and I could beat him in one and two, and so I thought if I could get alongside of him on the last lap and then see what happened down here in three and four, and uh, hopefully I could maybe get in there with him and beat him back to the line. But uh, that, that caution really hurt, and uh, then uh, we were getting ready to lap some cars, and that really hurt, so... Uh, I can't be disappointed. Uh, I'm happy I qualified second and a run second today and the car run good and the boys did a good job and that's the main thing. Darrell, it looked like when you go in down in three and four that the car might bind up just a little bit on you. Was it doing that and, and causing you a problem? Well, it's one groove. Uh, all the oil and stay dry and everything that had been put down was all down low. And uh, so the, the, the groove was up near the top of the track. He had the groove and I had to get down low to try to get under him. And I couldn't ever get, I just couldn't accelerate off a of turn four. It was so slick, the tires would break loose, and he'd get a little advantage on me. And then I'd catch him back in one and two, and then we'd get even down here. And it was just a seesaw battle, and a good battle. And uh, I was a little unhappy that one time with the incident on pit road, but otherwise it was a good day. Did, did, what did this do for your confidence level, Darrell? You've known this team was capable. You almost had the pole here. You almost finished in the first spot here. Your confidence level had to go straight up. Well, the guys the guys are really pumped. They have been for the last several weeks. Our finishes is just not, it's not a good indication of how good this team is. We've had some awful rotten luck. A lot of times when a car would be a, a, a winner or up front car, something would happen and it, we'd never get to prove it. Bristol, the Darlington and the Southern 500, I don't run the first half of the race. I run the second half of the race. And I didn't get to run my half, so I don't know how good I'd have been there. And there's just been other times when things like that have happened. Okay, Darrell Walter from the Tide Ride, second here today in Richmond. Tides are rising. <laughs> Indeed they are, DW. Maybe the tides have turned for that Hendrick team. Darrell Walter getting his best finish of the year, second here at Richmond, Eli. So it was quite a day here at the fairgrounds in Richmond, Virginia. We are glad you've been able to join us on SETN. And we all congratulate Dale Earnhardt, driver of the Wrangler Jeans Chevrolet. <laughs>